Welcome to our Heritage Works. Today we're going to do a clock repair and then show you what you would need to do if you wanted to create a clock. This clock has not been keeping accurate time for some time now. As you can see, it is way behind in its actual time. I have purchased a replacement clock module. It'll be a simple take the current one out and then replace it with this new one and put it back together. The first step is we need to remove the screws that hold the front and the back of the clock together. This is a simple matter of just unscrewing the screws and removing them. I found that they're a little hard to get out so I waited until I turned the clock face over and let the screws fall out. With all the screws uh, removed, I was able to take the back off of the clock and then I started to clean the glass and the frame while I had it apart. Once I flipped the clock face over, I had access to the hands. All I have to do is gently pull them out. They are just a pressure fitting, so a gentle, firm pressure will pull them out. Be careful not to bend them when you're pulling them out. So it's grab down near the base and just pull. With the hands removed, I can now take the module out. So I'll flip it over and I will try to uh, pry out the module. Now, I am lucky that this one is held together by two clips. They're a little bit too much for my fingers, so I have to use the screwdriver to help pry it out but I'm being careful not to break the clips. Sometimes these are glued in, in which case you don't have much choice but to break the tabs off. With the old module out, I can snap in the new module. With the new module in, I'm able to flip the clock over now, and then it's just a matter of putting the hands on. Again, these are pressure fit, so I'm going to start with the hour hand and press it down onto the shaft of the new module. Then I'll do the minute hand, and then I'll do the second hand last. As I'm putting the hands back on, if I notice any of them are bent, all I have to do is straighten them out. They bend really easy, so straighten them out with your fingers and then put them on. You want to make sure that the hands do not cross over each other as they are turning. So uh, periodically I'll look from the side just to see that I've got the clearance that I need. With the hands back on, I can turn it over and put the battery back in and give it a test just to make sure that all the hand movements are working fine. Um, I want to make sure that they're not going to cross over each other and that the module that I put in is good. Every now and then you will get a bad module, but that's very rare. And this one seems to be working just fine, so I'll be able to remove the battery and reassemble the clock. The old module is no longer good for using as a clock, so I'm going to take the case and discard it. I'll recycle it. But the inner pieces are some gears. They're plastic, but there's gears in here and some other pieces that I will throw into my collection and I will use it in other projects, probably more like a steampunk type of um, setting, but I'll just throw them in there, keep them. So it's another way that you can utilize the pieces that you take out. My need was to replace an existing module, 
But what if you wanted to start a new project? So you would order your module and have it ready to go. What comes in the box are, I ordered several of them at once. So I got several pieces uh, of the module itself, the instructions, multiple versions of hands. And again, I'm gonna need to check for if they're bent or not bend them back but they bend easy um, it also has the components for uh, connecting the clock to your piece now the biggest thing that you need to do is uh, consider the depth of the shaft of your module the shaft needs to be matched to how thick it is that you're going to be putting the clock piece through in this case, I'm going to be using a piece of cardboard, so it's going to be a little loose uh, no matter what I use. But you want to make sure that if you're putting it through wood, metal, whatever, that that distance through um, that you're putting through your device, um, that the shaft thickness or length matches the distance of the clock face. Assembling a new clock is easy. So I've got my clock face, the cardboard. Yours might be wood, metal, whatever. And they give you a hanger that you put on uh, your clock module if you need it. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it because it's counterintuitive. You actually put it over the shaft and then it goes over the top of the module and forms a hanger on the back. Then you're gonna place the rubber washer on top of that. This gives you a barrier between the clock module and the face front. This helps reduce any vibrations and noise that the clock may generate. Then you'll push through your clock face, and then you're gonna add a small washer. This small washer actually helps um, disguise and hide the hole that you have in your clock face. And then you have a retaining uh, nut that you put through and it attaches to your shaft on the module. Then like before, we're gonna select the hands that we wanna use. We will put the hour hand on first. It goes all the way to the back. Then in the middle section, you're gonna put the minute hand and then if you're gonna use it or have it, then your second hand goes uh, at the very top or closest to you as you're finishing up. Use your imagination for your clock face. As you can see, I've used cardboard and it actually makes an attractive clock by itself. I could hang it up and be just happy with it the way it is and it'd give me a nice conversation piece. So as you're designing your clock, all you really need to think about is I need a hole to put the module shaft through and that that shaft matches the thickness of whatever it is I'm putting it through. So you could do a half moon, you could do stars, you could do cows, cats, you could do a house, whatever shape you want your clock to be. Um, it doesn't have to be round, it doesn't have to be square. Use your imagination and create a clock that is right for you. Also, as before, when we replaced ours, we're double checking our hands just to make sure that they're not gonna hit each other and bind up. So what kind of clock are you going to make? Are you going to do something really creative, something generic, something exciting, something vibrant with color? The possibilities are endless. I hope you'll use this video to inspire you to make something that works for you. Thank you for watching and I hope that you'll hit that like button 
and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out.